Hello and welcome to Abby Tyler's Healthy Living. My name is Abby Tyler. I'm your host, a family nurse practitioner, a health and wellness blogger, and a community volunteer. And here we discuss evidence-based health information regarding mind, body, and soul with a holistic emphasis. Thanks for joining me on this journey of health and wellness. Please enjoy the show. Hello, hello, ATHL. Let's welcome to our Tuesday show, Your Health in Focus. My name is Abby Tyler. I am your host. Nice to see you all again. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Hope you all had a beautiful day. Uh, as you can see, today's show is tips to lower your blood pressure. Last week we did um how to how high cholesterol affects your body. So now we're doing tips to lower your blood pressure by medication and also by non-medication and all. Okay, so let me start off first by saying that I am a provider, but I'm not your provider. So please do not make any changes to your regimen without checking with your own provider. Okay, and in the case that I am your provider, please do not make any changes without talking to me first. Okay, anyways, and also please share the show. I'm trying to raise money. So send me stars. I'm trying to raise money so I can put more into this because this is an app. Okay, so put money into that. I can bring you more evidence-based show shows. But if you can do it, please, I'd appreciate it. If you share the show, share the show because somebody else, it may be relevant to somebody else. It may be relevant to you or somebody else you love, okay? So please share the show. Please share. It just takes like one click and you share it, okay? So let me get in here and get my notes together. Alrighty. So today we're talking about um, tips to lower your blood pressure. A lot of people out there have high blood pressure and a lot of people out there too, um, sometimes they don't want to take medications that's going to lower the blood pressure because I'm like, oh, I don't want to take any more additional medications and my blood pressure is not that high and all that. It just want to put me on medications. These doctors just want to put me on medication. I don't need it. I don't need it. I don't need it. So no, that's not the case. Most of the time when you go to your doctor's office or your appointment also, we don't, if your blood pressure is high one time, we don't just do the blood pressure when you just put your medication right away. I mean, considering the fact that we remember, I told you when you see your doctor, when you go to the doctor's office and all that too, we're looking, we're taking your, your medical history, we're taking your family history and then the kind of surgical history, the other medications you're taking, all of that go, go into play. We put, put all that into consideration before we um, come down with a diagnosis and all that. So some people may leave the doctor's office like the first day with a blood pressure medication because, or prescription, because the fact is that your blood pressure is like dangerously high. Okay. But some people are like, we'll tell you, go ahead and eat first, um, eat healthy, exercise and come back in. You know, I may say come back in one week, come back in a month and all, because usually if it's really high, we need to check it again. Okay. So let's get into that. So blood pressure, let me just give you a little background there. Just leave your comments and then I can go ahead and I'll answer that during the show. Okay. So let me put on my glasses. One of the effects of high blood pressure too is, you know, affects your eyes. So make sure you are going to get your eyes checked like you were doing for diabetes also, okay? You're supposed to be getting your eyes checked once a, once a year anyways. And for those who have all the disease processes, your, your ophthalmologist will tell you how often they want to see you. Okay, so um, how's blood pressure measured? Blood pressure is measured to use the inflatable cuff. You've seen the one where we dial it up and all that too. We, I can also use the automatic one. Okay. we put that around your arm. So as the cuff tightens, it releases the systolic. And usually when we say 120 over 70, you be like, what number, what does it mean? A big number at the top, which number on the bottom. So systolic blood pressure is the one that is the number that you call over the lower one. Okay. That's the one that measures the artery against the walls as, as your heart contracts. Okay. So you have your blood vessels, your arteries, your veins, and all the arteries take oxygenated blood and all that to your body. Okay. So it's supposed to be outside of the artery. Your artery is here. Okay. And the pressure against the blood that the pumping outside of that is the higher number. As it goes down, the lowest number there is the one that, that, that the pressure within the arteries. Like, you know, yeah, we're, um, but your body needs a certain amount of blood pressure for you to be able to function. Like we always say in our, you know, colloquialism, like we say, empty back and stand. So you need a certain amount of blood pressure, um, normal amount of blood pressure for your body to work in order for your body to work. Like a balloon. If you see a balloon, the balloon needs a certain amount of blood pressure for it to work. Okay. But at the same time, you don't need too much pressure against the balloon that's rubbing against the balloon because then that means it's going to pop. All right. So basically that's, you know, 
in a nutshell, I'm not trying to make it too technical so everybody can understand it. All right, so what are some of the symptoms of high blood pressure? One of the main symptoms of high blood pressure is no symptom at all. Most people, that's the reason why some people are like not complying with their medications because they say, I have no symptoms. I have no symptoms. I'm not doing this and I'm fine. I feel good. I feel good. There are times we put people on medications and all that and they don't take their medication and they come back in three months. Did you not take your medication? No, I didn't take it because I was fine. And I told you I'm fine. I'm here now. I'm fine. And the blood pressure is still high. Some people just, you know, don't want to take their medications. Okay. So sometimes there are no symptoms. Alrighty. Let me go in here. And um, again, eye problem, because sometimes you feel the pressure in your eyes and that can be in the cause of something else too. But most of the time it's like, you know, pressure in your eyes and you're like, oh my God, oh, you start feeling, um, you know, headaches. It's like, I wake up in the morning, I have a headache, like later on at night, it's just this headache and this like neck pain, sometimes the dizziness. Dizziness can also be because of very low blood pressure too, okay? So all of that, but the most important thing here, the most important symptom here is no symptoms whatsoever. So that's one, one of the reasons why it's called like the silent killer or the one that contributes to the complications of other diseases too. So it's important that, you know, like I always say, you make sure you see your doctor at least once a year, okay, for your physical. And also, and if you don't have a blood pressure cuff at home, there cups at the um, different drug stores and all that. If you want to go there in the morning, get your blood pressure taken and all, because you don't want to take your blood pressure later on in the day. And when you're moving around and all everything else is going on. Somebody asked me, how come you're doing blood pressure when you go to the health fair? When I do my, my health fair, I tell people I'm doing your blood pressure right now, but this is just a baseline. If I'm concerned or any, if there's anything that concerning, I may tell you that, yes, you need to follow up with your, with your family doctor and all that to say, you came to the health fair, your blood pressure is a little high. And also I want you to go, you know, get it checked. If the blood pressure is very high, I've sent somebody to the emergency room from a health fair before. I'm like, just go ahead, just go right now. Even though I know it was like later on in the afternoon and we're moving around, it was just too high. And I've send people there too. But I also have that disclaimer that, you know, I need you to follow up. If you don't follow up, that's up to you. All right. So the sort of some of the symptoms, but just remember some of the symptoms, like no symptoms whatsoever. So it's important that you're following up with your, your doctor and they say your blood pressure is high at this visit, go ahead and get it checked again. Okay. And most people should have blood pressure cuffs at home and learn how to use it too. So, cause sometimes when I take somebody's, when we do the blood pressure, when you come to the doctor's office, do we do blood pressure? And then you come into the room and when we come in, by the time I come in, if your blood pressure was already high when I came in and when I look in the chart before I come in, usually I just, I go ahead and then um, we take your blood pressure later on in, 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 in the visit too, because sometimes it's like you're really nervous. It's called white coat hypertension, high blood pressure. It's also called hypertension. So sometimes you just need to relax a little bit. That's why as soon as you come into the doctor's office, we don't just take you right away and put you and get your blood pressure. You need to settle down first. Now, I know people will say, yeah, sometimes we sit there for another hour. Totally different thing. <laughs> okay. So. All right, so what are some of the causes of high blood pressure, you might say? All right, so there are two different kinds of high blood pressure. For the purpose of this um of this um show, we're going to be talking about the main kind, the one that most people have. It's called a primary um um primary hypertension. Okay, that's the one that just comes with age, lifestyle, and all those different things. There's, there's no there's no real problem um that's causing the blood pressure. Maybe your diet habits over the years and all that too. Atherosclerosis, high, you know, hyperlipidemia, high um. High cholesterol is the other name, okay? So that eventually over time, you know, and as you get older, everything slow down again, like I said. So that's just a primary kind of, we can pinpoint where the blood pressure, what, what's keeping your blood pressure high, okay? The other one is secondary hypertension, all right? That's the one where you have problems with your adrenal glands, the part, the part of your body that rests right over your kidneys and all. Um, you may have tumors there. You may have congenital heart defect, meaning you were born with some kind of heart um, defect, um, some cough medicines, some birth control um, medicines, some um, pain relievers, illegal drugs, uh, methamphetamine, cocaine, kidney disease, um, obstructive sleep apnea, and something. And we have, uh, some of the sleep apnea is when um, you know when you go to you're not getting enough sleep, you're snoring at night, and all that. So over time, that can have an effect on your heart and also the blood the, the blood that goes to your brain and also your thyroid. I talk about your thyroid gland right here. It's the motherboard of the body that controls everything too. So sometimes if we're giving you um, blood pressure medicine, we're checking your blood pressure, and it's not and you know and we're not getting it under control or we're not getting to where because okay, so your blood pressure just runs between this and this but it's like much higher every time especially when you're younger too and it's much higher that's when we go ahead and do additional testing so let's check the kidneys and see maybe there's something going on there let's check this one let's go over some more medications what is it that you're doing what kind of what kind of work that you're doing everything that's causing the blood pressure to be high and let's check your heart too of course 
for primary care, we may be sending you to go see the cardiologist too, so they can work, they can do more testing. Obviously, maybe there's something, a blockage in your heart or something else that's going on that's causing your blood pressure to stay high. Okay. Because eventually, again, you may run into problems when your blood pressure is not controlled. Alrighty. So what are some of the risk factors? Age. You know, one of the things we're talking about primary hypertension now and high blood pressure, right? So if you're getting older and um, again, you know, as you get older, your blood pressure will rise. Some people never get high blood pressure during that time, but that's one of the things. The higher, the older you get, because again, your lifestyle and everything, your blood pressure tends to get a little higher as you get older. Doesn't mean young people can get a high blood pressure because remember now your family history too. Okay, family history. If your family has high blood pressure in, and especially if they got the high blood pressure at a younger age, usually I would ask. You know, your family history, um, did your mother get blood pressure, high blood pressure? Does your father have high blood pressure? When were they diagnosed? So usually we start looking at the time when they were diagnosed and things. And also we ask about other um, things that come along with blood pressure, the complications of blood pressure too. Okay, so make sure you're asking your family that. Um, it's excess alcohol drinking that can also affect your blood pressure. Smoking, it hardens your arteries, that can also affect your blood pressure. So there's so many risk factors that we're talking about diet, um, lifestyle, and all of that, okay? And lifestyle would be mainly if you're not being as active and all. Alrighty, so let's get to the tips on how to lower your blood pressure now, and then I would just um, go through there. Um, so let me, before I start this, so the normal blood pressure, I'm going to put this on the screen, and I'll put this in the... Um, in the comment section again, let me go in here for a second. I'll put that in the comment section again. So if, if the if the picture doesn't show clearly on the screen, you can you know you can just go in the comment section and see. So some of the, the American um, College of Cardiology. Okay, so I'm not just saying that by myself. Alrighty. So um, this is green there. Your normal blood pressure. You see there where the green part is less than your higher number. Like I talked about, your systolic blood pressure should be less than 120 and the uh, Diastolic blood pressure should be um, less than 80, okay? So we start looking at that. Anything elevated, that's when we start saying elevated blood pressure, anything 120 to 29 over 80. When we start going to stage one hypertension, that's 130 to 139 over 80. So you get the drift there, and I'll go there. And I'll put that in the comment section too so you can stop the video and read or also go through that, all right? So let me get that off the screen. So when I talk about high blood pressure, again, I talked about the trifecta last week, where it's like diabetes, high blood pressure, and um, high cholesterol, because all those things you can you can't talk about high blood pressure without mentioning, especially high cholesterol. Okay, so you may not have diabetes, but they kind of kind of go together already. So you don't want your blood pressure going to have, even if you're like stage one high blood pressure, a stage two, you want to keep it controlled. Let's say if your blood pressure is like 140 over 90, we're trying to get that bottom number, especially that bottom number. We want to get it down as much as possible. Okay. But if it's like staying there and you're not getting higher, then we can still keep your blood pressure is controlled. We might want to bring it down, but it's not like you coming back and your blood pressure is like 160 over 110 and anything. And that number of that bottom number is like higher than 110 and 100. And you know, we're not working then the medication may not be working and we need to add another medication or change the medication. And of course, again, like I said, we may have to send you to cardiology so they can do additional testing that is outside the scope of practice of a primary care provider. All right. So what are some of the tips that you can use? Let's get in there and see here. I'm going to get to the questions. Let me see. Oh my God, I got so many questions before I get there. Let me see. Let me look in there and look at some of the questions. Um... Let me see here. Jerome Gaming. I just shared this on my wall. Thank you so much. I love you for that. Thank you. Uh, Telly Brown says, too busy at times to do blood pressure check daily at home, but good advice. Come on, blood pressure. Cuff. Yes, you should be doing it. Well, the best time to do your blood pressure is to do it in the morning. When you wake up in the morning and all that, you go ahead and pee and sit down. You're resting before you eat your breakfast the best time. And if we tell you to take your blood pressure at home, maybe for a week and then come back, usually we tell you to take your blood pressure at the same time every day, first thing in the morning. Sometimes we might say take it in the evening too, because based on what you're doing, is to take it in the evening, make sure you're writing it down, keeping it on the log and then bring it in. And when you bring that log in, we look at that and see and then measure that against what we're doing in the office and see maybe, okay, there's something else that's going on that's causing that. And again, like I said, we might go and do additional testing to see what's causing your blood pressure to be high all the time. Alrighty. So let me see. Mr. Grant Martin says, is 145 over 85 too high? That's high. That's high because that you're already into the stage two now. So anything 120 has to be with less than 120 over 80. But that depends on, 
are you on medication? How long have you been on the medication? Are they controlling it all? So 145 or 85, that is high. And if it's high on medication or, you know, check with your doctor to see what's going on. Because it's just a number there. I have to look at the bigger picture also. All right. So let me see here. Green Martin, what is your age? Is a mission factor too? Yes, I said that. Risk factors also. So Mr. Green Martin, 58. Okay, yeah, that's high. That's high. So making sure, checking your family history. Um, I'm sure you're talking to your doctor at this time and letting them do all the medication, list of your medications and all that, your past history and all that and go through that, okay? At, at a certain age, you for males, especially, I usually say, you know, you, at least you have to go get your echocardiogram, which is the ultrasound of your heart. If you have any, like your veins sticking out over here, you want to get an ultrasound of your carotid arteries too, because those are the ones that I would tell you, there's any blockage that could cause problem later on. Okay. So let me see here. Uh, okay. I don't know. I don't, I don't really. So let me go there. So Jackie say, what kind of food bring down blood pressure? Is it hereditary? Risk factors. One of your risk factors is also um, um, family history. Okay. So you want to make sure that, um, again, like, but you can, you can prevent it. You can prevent it or delay as much as possible. Just because your family has it doesn't mean you should have it. But one of the risk factors is family, um, family history too. Okay. So, but I'll get to the food stuff before later on. And when I talk about the food thing, I don't mean for you to change your Liberian food. I don't mean to change whatever um, ethnic background you want. Just kind of incorporate most of these things into your diet. Okay. Because there's no way when you're in your, in your forties and fifties and you've been eating a certain amount of food all your life, you're not going to go to start eating like really healthy food all of a sudden. Okay. So we have to be realistic when we do patient teaching also. So let me go in here and go to my banners. So what are some of the tips to lower your blood pressure here? So let me see here. So, um, number, so avoid coffee. Okay. Avoid caffeine, not say you should not have your caffeine or that to, um, caffeinated drinks like your sodas and all try to cut back on that. I drink only one cup of coffee a day. Some people might drink two or so, but cut back on that. It's how you, and also when you're taking your blood pressure, don't go drink your heavy coffee and come to the doctor's office for your, for your appointment. Okay. Because that's going to affect the blood pressure too. So cut back on your coffee to tell you, um, maybe like one to two cups a day and not the huge big cups. So if you're one of those people who like to drink a lot of coffee and you, sometimes if you drink too much caffeine, you feel your heart like kind of going like that, there's some palpitations you definitely want to go get that check because when there's too much caffeine you're drinking, okay? So cut back on the sodas, cut back on, if it's non-caffeinated, do non-caffeinated. If you have other diseases, so you know you're supposed to be staying away from sodas anyways, and also coffee, cut back on that sweetened drinks, all of that, because you also have to be watching your cholesterol, remember? Okay, so the next one is stress reduction. I know that's kind of hard. We're all in this world, wherever part of the world you're in, especially if you live in America, where it's like, you know, get up and go, get up and go, get up and go. You have to watch your stress reduction. Okay. So, because it does increase your blood pressure, it doesn't, it does do it temporarily, but if you keep yourself in a hyper sense, you know, state every time, like just people with high type A personality, or they always have to be like on the, like a top level all the time. It's like, whew, take a breather and relax a little bit. You don't have to go hard at everything. Okay. I know sometimes people get very angry also. And people who are so like, you know, you're like, just calm down a little bit. And that's the worst thing you want to say to somebody when they're really mad, so, but just cool it down, just cool it down, just cool it down. Okay. So stress management, you want to do that. Some of the ways to do that, you can do some deep breathing. Like I tell people, you can go, like, you go breathe in and you hold it deep and then you breathe out. Okay. You go it's like you breathing in and then you're blowing away this nice little, little smudge and flower or a little chicken. What's it called? Chicken? <laughs> it's like, I don't know. But anyway, so you want to do that. Also, um, to, not to get for better time management, you can use your planner and write it down because when you start thinking about, oh my God, I got to do this, I got to do this. And that time management can make you stressful too. Over time, that can affect your blood pressure. So you can be like, okay, yeah, I've just got to do this. Like after a while, that can, especially the kind of work that you do too. But if you're that kind of person who like, top, you know, have to go, have to go, have to go get a plan or time management is very important. You can do some therapy or counseling because sometimes you're just really, really over anxious. And it's not just, okay, I'm just anxious about this or I'm just anxious about that. But I have like, you know, generalized anxiety disorder. And most times people don't want to believe that. 
like I said, I, sometimes I just watch TV when I, especially when I'm at night, when I'm reading charts or stuff, I just watch TV, something that's not going to make me stressed out. Uh, I might read something, uh, something funny on Facebook, look at pictures and all that. So just to kind of relax my mind because the kind of work I do, I'm like stressed out all day. All right. Even if I'm just smiling and I know how to like, okay, just calm down because I know something's going to happen and you're going to have to stop and go do that when you have to come back and finish charting and all. Okay, you can do some journaling also. That also helps to kind of put your feelings down, crafting, going for, you know, doing some fun stuff, find fun stuff to do. Okay, I know people can say that one, you know, ain't got nothing else to do, it's not, but that doesn't mean, you know, you, it, it helps with kind of releasing the blood pressure. Because again, like I said, you know, it's like a little balloon. It's like a balloon. You sit in there and, and, and it's like, you see inflating, 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 inflating. Something's got to give. So you want to make sure you keep it to where it needs to be. Okay. And um, taking your medication as prescribed. I understand people is like, again, I don't have any problems, so I don't have to take my medication and this and that. You have to take it. It's not something where you can take only when you need to. Okay, there's some other medications where they say if you have like congestive heart failure, the doctor might call you and then they call you and say take an extra dose today to get the fluid out of your, out of your legs or if you find yourself short of breath. You have to take your medications like, uh, like it's prescribed. And we have certain medications that we start with and then we add more to it, okay? So somebody else, depending on their medical history, it may not be on the same medication or sometimes based on race. Also, we don't start the same medication. Some medications to when you started the side effects, we may have to change it, especially like you, you're an diuretic. So you're like you're if you take like Sinopril, things like that, some people develop like a really bad cough. Uh, some people sometimes their, their tongue might swell up or something else. So it's important that we go ahead and check that. Some people don't get that, but it's just one of the things that we love. Other medications too can kind of lower certain things in your body, like some of your minerals, some of your, we'll do your labs and all your potassium. So we may need to replace that. All right. People might say, well, why would you give me medication that I have allergic reaction to? Most people don't. It's something that we tell them. So that way you make sure that you call in to let us know. Anything that has your tongue swelling and all that, you need to be going directly to the emergency room anyways. All right. And there's so many other medications that we add to that, to your baby lockers, your, all that. So based on that, and we make sure when you come in, we're going to be asking that we do your blood pressure. And you don't, doesn't mean that you have to be on blood pressure medication forever. All right. Once your blood pressure, sometimes your blood pressure may drop so low or, you know, you're eating healthy, you lost some weight and all. So we might say, okay, let's lower the, lower the dose, keep lowering the dose, lowering the dose until you don't have to be on blood pressure medications anymore. Now that also that's for primary, um, uh, you know, hypertension, like I said, it's not, it's not caused by anything else that we need to keep you, we need to keep you on the blood pressure medicine. Okay. So making sure you were doing that. Um, improve your sleep. All right. Sleeping is really important. Getting enough sleep, especially as an adult, at least eight hours sleep every night. <laughs> I know I say that and I don't get eight hours sleep every night. Um, but try your best, especially if you, if you go to bed, um, try to do some sleep hygiene when you go to bed, making sure that you turn off everything. If you're going to be watching TV, not watching anything that's going to stress you. Uh, don't put them, you don't put on sometimes like you're in, um, you know, the, all the different social media stuff, you're watching it and all of that just keeps you so hyped up at night and you're not getting enough sleep. So you need that sleep. When you're younger, you didn't have to sleep that that long. As you get older, you have to get enough sleep, at least eight hours, six hours of sleep, six to eight hours, but at least eight hours, okay? And um, if you, again, like I say, if you're snoring, if you're snoring, people say you snore heavily and all, go ahead and get a sleep study done. They can do the sleep study at home. They can do the sleep study um, at, at, um, at in the lab and all, because most people are like, I don't have the time to sleep away from my house, but they can do that. And depending on when you just talk to your doctor or what's going on, they might say you have to get it done at the lab. You go to the lab, they put the stuff in your head, the little probes, they put it there and you go to sleep and they watch you overnight to see how many times you're waking up because you're snoring and you're getting up and you're coughing. All of that. Every time you're getting up and you're coughing, your heart is slowing down. Okay. And sometimes there's no, when you're not breathing because your tongue is like blocking your airway, when you're not breathing, there's no air going, there's no blood and circulation going to your heart. There's none going to your brain either. Over a period of time, you're waking up in the morning, you're sleeping most of the day, you're not getting enough sleep, people find you falling asleep back and forth, back and forth, and you're coming up with a headache and everything else. You cannot concentrate, especially for children also. They cannot concentrate, and sometimes they think they're just being like really misbehaving in school. All of that. Eventually, if you do not get help for sleep apnea, you will die. Okay, you may have a heart attack, you have a stroke, or you will die. It's 
so very important. Okay. And I know people like, I don't want to wear no big thing over my face. Um, the contraction is called CPAP where you put in there, it's supposed to be pushing the air, you know, into your nose and your mouth that keeps your airway open. All right. People be like, that's not romantic. I don't want to do that. That's not, you know, my husband doesn't want to see that. My wife doesn't want to see that. Get all your romantic things out of the way and put your CPAP on me, go to sleep. And if he or she loves you, they're not going to be complaining about the fact that you need that to literally breathe. And I always tell people, and like I always tell all my, 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 my patients and also tell my new nurses when I was training them, if you cannot breathe, nothing else matters. Nothing else matters if you cannot breathe. Okay, so get that. You may not need to have the device on your face. There's so many different things now. They can put a little little thing in your nose that just put the air in there, depending on your, your insurance, of course. And you may need, there's three different stages. So you may not get to, you may not need the big, machine right away or you may not need it at all they just need to tell you to change the different way hold on one second one second <coughs> excuse me <coughs> all righty so it's icy but i don't know if get that so but i have it um the, I have it, I put the half stuff of water there too. I never drink the whole bottle thick like that. Okay, so make sure if you smoke, please quit. Please quit smoking. There's there, like there's no there's no value to smoking, okay? And they make it in a way where you become so addictive. So it's really hard to quit smoking. But the most important thing is don't start. Do not start. Try as much as possible. Do not start. Okay. So quit smoking. There's so many resources out there now that you can ask your doctor about. And because all it does is just harden your arteries. Okay. And then it makes it makes your blood pressure high because then that means your blood is not expanding like that. Enough for the oxygen and all nutrients, everything to go through. Okay. So no reason to be smoking. None. one 800 Quit now. 1-800-Q-U-I-T-N-O-W. You can call there and it has so many resources and you can speak to your provider also so you can get that checked, okay? Um, if you drink alcohol, I know the new thing now, um, I think I did that, uh, quit smoking and reduce alcohol intake. Um, you're supposed to be, I think, the, no more than uh, one to two bottles of beer a day. People drink some hard liquor. I, I've in interviewed some patients where I'm like, oh, you, that much alcohol, huh? So talking too much, my throat's getting dry. Excuse me. Go in here for a second. Okay, so you want to make sure um you know reduce your alcohol intake. There's again, there's no redeeming value to like drinking alcohol if it's just a little like I said a little nightcap here and there. Of course, you know it's important to do that. So um active lifestyle. I always talk about exercising you don't necessarily have to go to the gym you can just go ahead and just exercise and um and 30 minutes a day three days a week you can run you can dance there's so many free stuff on on youtube now i got myself my little uh, i'm gonna make a video of that um also there's so many things that you can do at home lifting heavy boxes and all you can do that so there's you don't necessarily have to go to the gym if you say i don't like to go to the gym you can go walk in a park you can walk in your neighborhood if it's safe you can walk in your neighborhood making sure if you're going for a walk that you have you tell somebody that you're going and make sure you have your phone with you and watch out if you have your headphones on that um you don't I usually just put one in my ear so that way I'm I'm aware of my surroundings so that's very important okay especially for women out there to men too but for women of course you want to make sure you take care of yourself so 150 minutes um a week I just said uh, if you can do more go ahead and do more alrighty and don't don't do it just because you want to look good but if you look good in the process that's good but you want to keep your heart healthy and just people might say oh yeah I'm skinny I don't have to do that no you can be skinny and have diabetes and have high blood pressure so, so don't think yes because I'm skinny but the heavier you are of course your heart has to work a little harder so of course you want to you know exercise and stay at a healthy weight you can swim and you can go swimming weight lifting and all that as you get older for women um who are menopausal and postmenopause and all that, so your body's not making that much calcium anymore. Talk to your doctor and see if they need to put you on calcium supplements, vitamin D supplements, because you're not making that much vitamin D for your bones. And if you're a thin woman and all, you want to uh, get your bones checked, okay? So your dexter scan and all, making sure you're getting your mammogram, getting your boobs checked. All right, change your diet. 
Okay. Again, like I said, I'm not saying go out there and, um, you know, go ahead and forget your, your, the food that you be eating forever. And I'm not talking against any particular food because people eat mashed potatoes again. People eat, um, um, pasta, all of that and bread, white bread, anything that's white is bad diet wise. Okay. So don't white rice. You want to make, you make that brown rice quinoa. That's the new one I've been starting. It tastes like rice and all that too. I've been mixing it up a little bit. I make, but we usually eat brown rice. So, um, mix it up with regular rice, the brown rice and that it has a lot of fiber, eat really high fiber food. So look for foods that are high in fiber because what it does when it doesn't stay in your body that long. Okay. So you eat it and then actually, you know, you go to the bathroom, so it's not staying. It, it, does give the uh, necessary nutrients to your body, but you can take that out. Okay. So high in fiber. And then also look online. It's called diet. It's called a dash diet. It's like a Mediterranean diet too. It's dash diet. It's dietary approach to stopping hypertension. D-A-S-H. So just go Google and see all the different foods that are underneath there. All right. You can try that for like, again, for Liberian food. If you're eating food with palm oil, again, people say again, yes, they say you can have palm oil, one teaspoon of palm oil per food. Again, who does that? Okay, so don't eat too late. Eat heavy foods in the, in the middle of the day. In the morning, eat light foods. If you have to eat, have a snack later on, especially if you're not diabetic or you don't have other reasons now. Okay, eat your snack at night, healthy snack at night. Um, try just put in some salad here and there. You can even mix your rice with salad. That's, I mean, if, you know, if you don't like eating salad and all that, eat some fruits, remember, and go out and exercise. Go outside, go outside, get some fresh air and all, all right? Again, like I said, you know, foods that are low in sodium, low in um, palm oil, low in salt. We cook too much. We put so much salt in our food. We put the salt, the seasoned salt. We put everything in there. It tastes good. But over time, as you get older, it's not healthy for you. So you can cut back and you can still make it healthy, but you can cut back in there. And especially if somebody in the family has high blood pressure, like they sort of my mother or the father, everybody has to eat healthy. I know it sometimes like who wants to eat that, but you're not eating something that's so tasteless. You're eating something that's healthy and everybody eats that way. You get used to it. Now, every once in a while you want to splurge and eat something outside and you know, that's okay. But you don't, don't want to do that because as you get older, your body slows down. Your body cannot fight it. When you were 20, in your twenties and 25 and all, you could eat anything. All right. And your body is still healthy, but that's the thing about it. You need to understand also that if you're in your twenties, you started to have to start practicing good habits because whatever doesn't affect you now, it starts manifesting itself when you get into your forties and fifties. Okay. You know, people say, Oh my God, I can't believe my numbers are like that now. I can't believe my cholesterol number that's high. I can't believe that's this. Well, everything that he manifests before when you were younger is coming on now. Okay. And especially if your mother, you had children, you had all these different things, your father, everything else. So, so it's important that you start doing some good health habits when you're in your twenties. So when you're in your fifties, you get used to it. I'm not saying, you know, don't do anything fun. Just do your best to like, you know, like again, modify the modifiables. Like I said, if you missed last week, she'll go back and watch that. Okay. And, um, lose weight. Like again, like I said, lose weight because, um, if you, if you're overweight, your body's working harder, your heart's working harder to get all the blood and everything to the different, different places. And there are a lot of obesity related um, issues too. So again, I'm not fat shaming anybody. I'm not skinny mini myself. I exercise. I try to do my best and all. When I actually be very skinny, skinny, because very skinny people too. I took care of patients who were like skinny, 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 you know, a whole population of people. And they had like, you know, diabetes, diabetes, um, type two diabetes ran heavily in our population. All right. So don't think that because somebody's skinny. So that means they're okay. So, but it's all important because again, like I say, if you're walking up the stairs, think about it. If you're walking up the stairs and you're in, and, and, and your body would just walk up the stairs normally. If you have like maybe 50 pounds of book with you walking up the stairs, you can you, you can understand how you're going to be breathing a little bit more. So now just imagine if you have that extra pound on your on your body frame for your height and all that, your heart's going to work more because it's like when you get at the red light, you know how when I mean, the light turns green and you're next to a big truck, how you can just go like that. That big truck has to take a little while to warm up and all that, not warm up, but I guess revved up. I don't know. And then before it starts going. So that's just, I'm just trying to paint a picture there now. And I'm trying to be as sensitive as possible. Okay. So please don't inbox me and tell me I was calling people fat. All right. <laughs> I did, you know, somebody told me that too, because, but I, you know, again, it's for your health. Your, if your, your provider is not telling you about your health and all and things that you need to do to stay healthy, then that person is not a good provider. All right. I do myself again. Like I said, I exercise too. I don't like doing it that much, but I know I have to do it. Okay. So what are some, some of the complications? Let me see if there's any top, any questions here. 
Alrighty, so Miss some my kinds. Thanks for the education advice and medical safety tips as always. Miss Abby, I enjoy the platform. Thank you very much. Oh, let me see. Okay, um, Jackie said no rice. Oh, no, you can have <laughs> you can have rice. You can still have your rice again. Uh, I don't know. Um, brown rice again, like I said, quinoa. I think it's spelled Q-U-N-O-A. But you can go in there again. Also, the dietary approach to stopping hypertension. You can put all that into your meals. Alrighty, so let me see here. And um, so you can do all that. So it doesn't mean that you're just going to sit there and you're not going to have anything to eat and everything is going to be, I think I had this here already. Let me see here. So I'm going to put all these in the um, in the comment section also again. So that's some of the food you can have, like your watermelon, your asparagus. You can put that into your food. What we do first, the garlic, um, turmeric, turmeric, they pronounce that, and food that are high in fiber. Again, go online, go on, on dietary approach to stopping hypertension, the DASH diet. So you can still eat your rice. But people eat, like some people eat rice from morning, eat breakfast, noon and night and it's like oh you're eating heavy bowl of rice after eating bowl of fufu and all that that that's not healthy all right so it's just important that you do your best do your best it's not easy especially as you get older you have so many responsibilities it's not easy all righty so let me just go in here so what are some of the complications of um that let me just go in here and do this. Oh, sorry, <laughs> I have to keep moving my thing around. So I'm just gonna take like a one minute break if you guys and we can just go to the complications and just hold on, okay? By the way, please, uh, if you're not a fam um, um follower, please um click like and follow. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna do this. Just watch this for a second, and I will be back. here let me go in here for a second and i'm going to put my banner back so thank you guys for those of you who stayed i tried not to make these shows too long and all that um let me see here so i met sir lee said are salads vegetables or eurocentric food the only healthy food categories do we have examples of healthy liberian dietary items I just named them now, like Eurocentric foods. And now salad is, I mean, some of you who have lived in like in America for so long, you can longer consider that Eurocentric foods. But it's like it's got um it's got fiber in it, vegetables has fiber um, fiber in it. Remember back home we used to eat plum and and we used to eat sugar cane and all those different things, and we moved around a lot. So you would live in a healthy life back home. Besides the health issues and everything, health system over there. So you're more active over here. The salad has the, the fiber in it. You can eat rice. Like again, like I said, you can have brown rice. You can mix it with, um, we used to, I used to mix it with oatmeal before because oatmeal has that roughish and also has the fiber in there. So you can all, don't eat too much palm oil. All right. As you get older, you're not supposed to eat too much palm because it's like a saturated fat. It's very, is there fattening and all that. You can have back home, they call it argo oil, vegetable oil over here. You don't have to eat, you know, when you sit in there, you don't have to put everything in the food. You don't have to put all that meat and um and, and cow meat and all this different things. Dry fish, a lot of dry fish. If you have to put, you can put um regular fish in there. Like I said, more food from the, more um, meat product, or not meat, but whatever it is, more from the sea and less from the land. So you, you know, less cow meat, less beef and all you're eating, um, you're eating more seafood. Uh, don't put too much salt in there too, especially if you're eating shrimp and all, but you're drinking a lot of water, you're cutting back because I remember back when we're doing a lot, you have to do a lot more exercising too and cut back on the rice intake. All right. So, okay, this is, this is, I had a container, I had a picture where I had a container where this is how much soup you're supposed to put and how much rice and how much vegetables. And my friend was teasing me. She said, <laughs> like, bro, I'm rice in all three containers. 
But it's not, no, we're not taking away your food and we're not saying, okay, yes, you have to eat this food. Because remember, like I said, Eurocentric, people who are Italian, people who um, people who eat um, food that like pasta, all those different things. Those are heavy starchy foods are also, if you're eating mashed potatoes and things like that, those are heavy starchy foods. That's no different from rice. So to my patients that are, um, that they're not Liberian, I'm also telling them the same thing too. Cut back on the heavy starchy food, cut back on the white bread. You want to cut back on the white bread, you can eat wheat bread, you can eat rye bread. So those are all things that I'm going to tell everybody. Everybody. Yes, we're going to tailor it to your to your ethnic background too. So I'm not going to go tell like brown person, oh, don't cut cut back on your mashed potatoes. When I know they don't eat mashed potatoes, you know, go and cut back in this. I have like patients who are like you told me off in the building at work and all that. So you know, we're going to tailor it to you. So when you go see your doctor and all, make sure you let them know. Okay, because I can hand you something to eat healthy forever. And if that's not what you usually eat, you're not going to do that. But you can take all of that and incorporate it into your Liberian diet, into your ethnic diet and make it a little healthier. Because uh, even when I had it, my Asian patients, they eat a lot of rice, too. That's not Eurocentric. So they, too, have to cut back because they also have a higher um, risk of having diabetes, also type 2 diabetes. So you can make Liberian food healthy. And you, most people know, like, okay, I'm not going to eat cassava leaves rice and eat red or palm butter and eat on red or cassava leaves or... or or um, potato greens and all that three days a week or four or five days a week. That's too much. I'm going to have to make sure I eat maybe something with a little bit of vegetable oil in between here. I'm going to make sure if I eat a whole lot more, I'm going to have to exercise. I'm going to have to walk a little bit. So you have to do, you, know, you have to make what, what it does for you, for your ethnic group to make it. But I would tell everybody, if you're eating heavy starchy food, rice, mashed potatoes, white bread, um, if you, especially some people wake up in the morning and they eat a sliced bread, then you're eating rice for lunch, then you're eating something heavy for, for dinner again, and you're eating something heavy for, for, for nighttime, all of that, all of that incorporated into that. And remember, you are all giving you the, all the same medications. Everybody's getting the same blood pressure medications, depending on, you know, like I said, depending on whatever factors and all that, sometimes racial factors too. So we're going to be doing that. And your blood work is going to be coming back. It's going to be tested by the same set of labs and all. We're going to be doing that. When you're in America, you're going to be treated with Western medicine. We're going to incorporate the fact that you're doing all those things, but at the same time. So when you're here, I can't speak for back home, okay, because I never practiced back home. All right. So it's important that you're doing those things, incorporate those foods into yourself. Like the picture I just showed you, you can put some turmeric in your, in your palm butter. You can put some of this that you can put it aside a little bit, try to mix it up. And then eventually over time, you'll find yourself eating healthy because it's so important. It's a matter of life and death. OK, people die, you're dying every day. Sometimes, you know, I tell you, so let's go to the complications, heart attack or a stroke. Sometimes the first sign of a heart attack is a heart attack. OK, sometimes the first sign of a stroke is a stroke. It'd be like, oh, my God, it bought them. But this night, I did that. I made it. Oh, how do you know? Was he going to the doctor's office? Was he going this? Down? There are times that you can still have these complications, even with if you're taking medications and even if you're being compliant. So there's no 100 percent guarantee. That's why many people say, oh, the doctors don't know everything. No, we don't know everything. No, we never said we don't wouldn't do everything. There's research going on every day. So something that might be um, the good practice or the practice that was there during the time, acceptable practice, maybe even two to three years ago, it may not be acceptable or not because they had more um, um, studies and decided a and they said, okay, no, let's do it this way. All right. That's the reason why when people say, okay, you told us that last week, uh, two days, two years ago, and now you're telling us not the same way. No, no. And also, even when you're doing research paper, they tell you when you're in college, you can't do your research. Your research didn't go back more than five years, more than three years, because things have changed that. Okay. So the studies going on every day, research going on every day, and things change. But it's important. It's a matter of life and death. We have a lot of like people that had a stroke. We had a lot of like people that had heart attacks. And we, you hear it, you know, so, it, well, yeah, when Jesus say yes, nobody can say no, nobody's playing God, but we have to tell you these things and say, okay, this is how life is supposed to be. That's, this is what's going to happen when you don't do these things. You may be lucky and nothing may happen. There's some people who are lucky, but do you want to, do you want to risk that? Drive without a seatbelt. Okay, fine. I think it will happen. Do you want to risk that? Do you not want to be prepared? Do you not want to be protected just in case? So it's not just to you, but I'm saying you don't, it doesn't have to be Eurocentric food because even with European um, patients, we tell them what to eat um, also healthy. I'm not a dietitian, so I'm not going to go into different, different uh, de the details of calories and all. Maybe one of these days I'll get a dietitian on, a Liberia dietitian probably, <laughs> okay? Um, and heart failure, because again, your heart's working over time. It's not pumping. It's stop, you're not pumping the way it's supposed to be pumping and all that over time. That's a progressive disease that, that would land you in and out of the hospital, in and out of the hospital eventually until you pass away. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I did a show on heart failure and also read about um 
what's his name? Queen Latifah's mother. She had that too. And she died at a young age. I think she was in her 50s or 60s. And that's a young age because you should be like living all the way up to your 90s by now. Okay. And so yeah, especially going in and out, it, it really like, it's what it does is like diminish your your, your, your your quality of life. Okay. You're in and out of hospital. It affects your life. It affects your livelihood. It affects your family structure. All right. Kidney problems. So your blood pressure is not controlled over a period of time. It affects the kidneys because that pressure is just there and it affects the major organs in your body to affect your kidneys. The kidneys don't hurt over time. You will have problems with your kidneys and that's how you land people in like, you know, for high blood pressure when it gets to the point where they have to have diabetes, um, um, when you have to be taking more medication to protect the kidneys, they eventually have to have dialysis or sometimes it's so bad that you may need a kidney transplant. And most people are not lucky to get a kidney transplant long before and they stay in dialysis forever. And sometimes they may not be a candidate for diet for, for a heart transplant. All right. Eye problem. Your blood pressure is too high over time. That pressure in your eye that can also lead to blindness. That can also lead to impaired vision and all too. So you want to, again, go ahead and get your eyes checked. And some um, also messes with your um, your liver and all that it can affect how your body process food and also it changes um, your memory because the blood I mean your blood vessels over time all of that the blood vessels like all over in your body and you're not getting enough um, your blood pressure your body doesn't get to the point where it relaxes and all because your blood pressure is running so high over time you get that and when anything affects your memory affects your understanding certain things and all that can also lead to dementia later on in your life too so and also can you sit in there you're like oh my goodness, like, you know, I had this headache and overdone, but think about it because if your blood pressure is not controlled over, over a long period of time, think about that balloon. Eventually something may happen. That's why I say a heart attack or a stroke. I'm also going to put that um, heart attack stuff in there and also the um, stroke um, mnemonics that I put in there the last time. So it's important. It's important. Nobody's trying to change. Again, like I said, when I first got this um, topic, when I first got this forum and all, I wanted to make sure it was going to be relevant to Liberian people because working in a hospital all those many years, you have to like tailor it. Everybody tailors stuff to the, to um, to a certain ethnic group and all that too. But within the Black African American um, ethnic group, there's also African be, um, there. So the subset of every ethnic group. So you can talk to a Black American person and say, okay, don't eat this, don't eat that, don't eat that. Okay, then you turn it to me or somebody who's like African and say, don't eat that. I'd be like, okay, fine, I don't eat that. Well. That's not helping me because I don't eat that, but I'm eating something that may, may that I can, you know, fix in a way where it can be healthier. Our food tastes good. Our food's like, I mean, like I said, we have a restaurant in my neighborhood where I live now, and it's like mostly American people that go there now. We all go there still, but mostly like American people go there. I love to hear them order. Uh, get to have some palm butter and some fufu, and you know, they love it. It tastes good. It's nicely seasoned. It tastes good, but you can make it healthy. Don't sit there and eat fufu and soup every day. Don't eat oily food every day. You got to get up and move around and exercise. You got to take your medicine like you're supposed to. You have to, you have to, you have to. And if you have a problem with the medication, talk to your provider slash doctor. Okay. And I provider again for NPPA and doctor. Okay. So talk to them. Say, I'm taking this medication, making this, you know, I'm taking this medication. It's making me pee a lot. I can't be living my life while I'm peeing all the time. They might say, okay, take it during this time of the day. So you don't have to take it later on in the day. So you're not staying awake. I'm taking this medication. It's making me feel a little dizzy. Okay. Let's check your blood pressure and see. Maybe we need to check it again. Maybe it's too high. We need to change the dose. I'm taking this medication. I got this cough and it's just not going away. And I know I don't have a cold or something like that. Okay. Maybe you have an allergic reaction to this medication and all that. So we changing the medications, right? We can do that we can do so many things that can we the most important thing is the quality of life okay your quality of life we want to prevent all the other complications that may come later all right there are certain things that we cannot change we cannot change your age we cannot change your race we cannot change your your um we can't change your sex i'm not talking if you're not outside if you're not female sign of birth or male sign of birth and anything else outside of that we have to work with that accordingly with that individual. Okay. So again, like I said, modify the modifiables, things that you can change. You got to change it. You got to get up. You got to exercise. You got to, you got to move around. You got to, it's every day. It's not something that's pleasant, but you want to stay as healthy as possible. All right. You can do all you can. And it doesn't mean it's not hundred percent guaranteed that you're going to be healthy all your life because anything can happen. People say, Oh, you can be doing all that. Something will happen. Yes. Okay. Something may happen, but the one that you can control why not control it, right? I mean, you can be in in a country that has access to everything, and something. And please, and when people Google, make sure you Google competently. 
Okay. I love that phrase. Make sure you Google competently. Don't just go in there and go in and go with the first thing because whatever it is you want to hear, there will be somebody on Google that will tell you what you want to hear. That's called confirmation bias. Okay. So, but it's important. And know your family history. Know your family history. Ask, when did you, when were you diagnosed with diabetes? Your first degree relatives, your mother, your father, your siblings. Okay. And sometimes we add the grandparents of that too, because it's like one degree over. All right. Ask them, when were you diagnosed with this? When were you diagnosed with that? Do you have any kidney problems? Do you have any other problems? Anybody born to heart uh, stuff? Okay. So it's really important. All right. It's really important. And it's, you know, we're talking about healthcare. It's not sexy. So if I was talking about something else that was more exciting, Trust me. Oh, I would have, I'd be sitting there be like, I'm not saying one more thing until I see my cash app going. If I did that, <laughs> I would not have any shows. And I love the shows. Don't get me wrong. I love to watch them. Sometimes I say that. I'm like, you know what? I've been listening to watch people saying that because everybody has their place. Everybody got an era. All right. So you got to entertain people and you got to help people and you got to political people. My thing is just try to, you know, get a balance. Listen to the health people too, in as much as you listen to the political people. Okay. And I listen to this. And also in Liberia, politics also is healthcare. In America, it's closely intertwined. The people who control our license, you saw how the COVID thing went. The people control the rules and regulations that we go by, healthcare providers that we go by. Those are all political people that you put in place to whoever to, to do that. So, <clears throat> yes, it's important. You, you know, people are like, oh, I don't, do, I don't do politics. I don't do politics. Politics is everything. It's just that when you're in a smaller country like Liberia, it like encompasses everything that you deal with. So it's very important. Okay. And we're not saying don't eat your food and, and this and that. Let me see. Let me see this. John Coe says sleeping six, eight hours, regular exercise, walking through the five days a week for 30 to 45 minutes and doing a high intensive exercise, like running and lifting weights and eating as much as possible. First food example. Yeah. Yes. The list. Okay. If they can go back for those of you who are going to be reading that, you can go there and read that. I'm going to open up that and hopefully you're looking at American cardiology, um, heart association stuff, because it's very important. Like I tell people, Google competently. Okay. So, but yeah, thank you. What was his name again? Um, John. Conway, thank you. Yeah, basically what I just said, okay? So it's important that you do that. I don't think I have any more notion there. I guess in typical Liberian dishes, eating collard greens, potato greens, sweet potato beans, any beans are especially good for you, blood lowering, sugar and pressure levels. Avoid also as much as possible, especially palm oil. Yes, especially palm oil. Alrighty, and again, don't put everything, you don't have to put every meat in the zoo in your pot. Okay, I know it tastes good. You wanna put your peak feed, you wanna put your everything in there, but in moderation. Basically, do things in moderation. But I also, I went to a party one time and, the, and this kid was there. I said, in moderation. He was drinking like, I mean, he must have drank like two, four big bottles of beer that one night. I'm like, I hope you don't plan on drinking Saturday and Sunday because he's like, yeah, I only drink on a weekend. I'm like, wow, okay, that's that, that's a lot, <laughs> you know? So, um, but most important thing, go to your, go to your doctor's. Get your uh, yearly checkup and all that. Get your blood work done. Get your blood work done. Get your blood work done. Okay. So they can see that when you do it the following year and the following year and they can trend it and say, okay, we're a little concerned. Get your cholesterol check. Get your cholesterol check. If you missed the cholesterol show last week, please go back and watch it again. I put that, I'm going to put that in the comment section. Doesn't mean that you, you have to like change completely your diet. Nobody's talking against any kind of food. All right. Just eat it so much. Don't eat white food, and white breads, white rice, um, caffeinated drinks, cigarettes, and all that. And do the advice. Gonna... Again, modify the modifiables. Change the things that you can change, okay? And stress reduction. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Okay? Sometimes you just have to let some things go. Sometimes you may have to let some people go. You know, you can take them in small doses. Let some people go. Let some things go, okay? Because I've been on that for almost an hour. So I usually said I don't want to be on. But I know it was an exciting show. And I'm glad you guys, um, you know, came on. And thank you for all the questions. For those of you who are watching now, I say thank you. For those of you who will be watching later, I say thank you as well. If you're not a follower of Abby Tyler's Healthy Living, please join um, Abby Tyler's Healthy Living page. I'm on Facebook and I'm also on YouTube. Tell your family members who are on, on YouTube. YouTube also to go and watch to join all right because i also put daily um short daily videos during the week and then tuesday i come on live at 7 p.m eastern time okay if i'm going to be off i usually just write a little stuff so that way you can you don't miss all the other short videos i make during the day too so thanks for joining me those of you joining me from focus on liberia from uh, from youtube from abby tyler's um healthy living the group and also from the page okay i don't see any more questions there i think i answered everything
Alrighty, let me see that. Yes, I did. Okay, so um, that was some of the tips to lower your blood pressure. And again, like I said, I will put some of the pictures in the comment section. Alrighty, and uh, just make sure you stay away from like, you know, heavy foods, heavy starchy foods. Do the best you can. Get enough sleep. Get enough sleep. If you, somebody tells you you snore, please, please, I'm begging you, get a sleep study. Okay? Please. Alrighty, thank you. And for men, of course, you know, if you have high blood pressure, it affects your ability to perform. So if you didn't hear anything else, hear that. <laughs> so, but anyways, but also it makes you tired and women too and all who wants to be tired. So, but, you know, be healthy for you, be healthy for you, be healthy for your family. Okay. It affects your life. It affects your livelihood. I always talk about that. You know, we have to work in this country. If you go back home, you have to work and take care of your family and friends. And other family members too. All right. So I love you all. Thank you all for watching. Thank you for your love and support. Okay. I will be back next Tuesday. Alrighty. And we're going to do another exciting show. I will preview that. So, so if you're not a follower, please click like and follow so you don't miss uh, my previews and all that too. But thank you all for coming on tonight. I really appreciate it. Truly from the bottom of my heart. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. And um, take care. <laughs>